Hi Media Group presents The Art of Conversation in collaboration with Executive Yacht. Hi, it's Sandra, and yes, I painted my lips to introduce you to Master Kenny Rogers. After 60 years of being in the music industry, Kenny Rogers enjoyed his last year spending time with his family, his favorite hobbies, and passions. Mr. Rogers has made an indelible mark on the music industry and in our hearts. You only need three things to be happy. Someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. And if you have those three things, you will have a very special life. As he told Pi Digest in his interview with Dave Gordon. This is Dave. Dave, this is Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers, what an honor. I know that uh, over the course of your career, you've had a number of uh, varying business interests, and uh, just to see if uh, you'd have any uh, choice advice for people who are looking to explore business options, uh, key advice from someone who's been successful in business. Uh, well, I think that, that really what it boils down to for newcomers, I, uh, the best advice I can give you is pay your, uh, pay your taxes on time. <laughs> You know, and save, put 20% away, and then have some fun. And I think get involved in business in something you care about. And that's, with me, I had recording studios, and I've always been a kind of real estate guy. I buy it, I fix it up, I sell it for profit, and I've done that 20 times. Wow. And that's that's the only, the only thing wrong is when... Real estate market goes, so do I. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's half the fun. I, I'm, I'm an interior decorator as well. And uh, half the fun have been, for me, fixing them up, you know. And and uh, we're looking at selling the house we're living in and getting a smaller house and a larger yard because we have identical twins that are 12. And we've got this huge house that we don't use, but about three rooms in it. So, we're, you know, you have to kind of sit back and look at your life, and your life will dictate your investments sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you've had various business interests like a restaurant, race cars, theme parks, and so on, and I'm wondering if there's a common link, or, or and why did you choose these less safe options where you could have gone safe? Well, you know, the, the, those were brought to me, and so they. Uh, and I don't think I didn't really have any money invested in those options at that time. The Roasters was an international concept, and the money came from uh, overseas. And it was. I thought it was a fun project. It was very well done. When you think back on it, it was one of the first health food, you know, the the grease dripped off the chicken, and so it was really healthy, and the food combinations were wonderful, and I thought it had a good image to it, mm-hmm. so I, I didn't mind being a part of that, and and uh, the racetrack, it was the same thing. Some guys bought me this, uh, brought me this thing and said, can we use your name? I said, well... As long as you don't do anything that embarrasses me, then you're welcome to use it, you know. So I, those were not my investments. My investments have been predominantly, and I, I say 80%, 85% real estate, because that's the only thing I really know, and I've made a lot of money on it. Mm-hmm. And I've enjoyed it. I, you know, I think you have to, and I don't know that everybody has this option. But I think you have to find something to invest in that you can enjoy owning it in case you can't sell it right away. Yeah. It, it will you know, bring you pleasure in one form or the other. And in my case, fixing up the property, and sometimes I didn't even get around to fixing it up. I bought property that sold two months after I bought it, and I made a lot of money on it, and I didn't get a chance to fix it up. And then that was a little disappointing for me. I know that sounds crazy, but money has never driven me. It's always been my zest for life, if you will. That I, I like getting up in the morning, knowing I have some place to go yeah. and something to do. You know, as a, you only need three things to be happy: someone to love, 
something to do, and something to look forward to. Amen. And if you have those three things, then you should have a very special life. Oh, that's uh, that's quite amazing. Uh, any update about Kenny Land? No, I, I talked to uh, the guy the other day, and he still says he's going to do it. He's going to do it on a different lake than we originally thought because it's closer to Atlanta, and he has some great ideas, and it's like everything else. He's the idea guy, and, uh, and they want to use my name, and I thought it would be a good concept. So, I mean, he, it's, there was a lot of animatronics involved, and it was real high-tech, and there's not anything like that right now. And that's why I thought it would be fun to do. Mm -hmm. uh, As an aside, you mentioned Kenny Rogers Roasters, and I know it hit a few bumps. Uh, Are you still still a shareholder or licensee? Uh, I'm still a shareholder, but it's it's owned by the guy in, um, where is he from? I've forgotten. Is that Malaysia? Malaysia. It's owned by him. He put up so much money, and when it didn't work here, I gave him the rights to do it internationally, and he has uh, done very well with it. There's there's a bunch of stores in Malaysia and in Jakarta and different places like that. There's 200 restaurants. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, well, he's he's got a lot of money, and it's, it's a good product, and they're still using my name and my photographs, and <laughs> I say, God bless them, you know. <laughs> Now, speaking of uh, success uh, financially or otherwise, uh, I read one interview where you, you talked about a very interesting anecdote, and that caught my attention. That was uh, when, you, uh, when you were a boy uh, going to school, you passed by wealthy homes with sprinklers, and you, want, and you vowed that you wanted that for, for your own one day if you became wealthy, and then you would drive around the estate in your golf cart enjoying these sprinklers. Could you tell a bit of a story? What was, le- what was it like driving around with that golf cart with the sprinklers? You know, it, it really, you, you, you don't think it will have that kind of impact on you. But it really did. I would literally drive that golf cart out and sit there and watch those automatic sprinklers on the golf course. And I felt like I had really done something I set out to do. You know, being raised in the projects, you kind of have to dream about what you want to do. Because at that point, I didn't have the options. And once I got the options, I thought, well, what do I want to do? And I wanted to do my dreams. And it was great fun. I mean, building the golf course itself, because it was as pretty as the Masters. I mean, we had flowers everywhere and a bridge that went over a little lake. I mean, and it was, and we kept it pristine. And it was really a spectacular uh, uh Michael Jordan said it was his favorite golf course he ever played. So, hmm. Hmm. Um, what what was the? Could you describe the feeling of of driving around those sprinklers in the golf cart? Yeah, the, the, if I had to pick one word, yeah, I would say it was. Oh, let me think about it. I mean, I have to think about. It was satisfaction <laughs> that I felt like I had really done what I set out to do. And, you know, I, I have no complaints about my life. If I die tomorrow, you can personally know I've had a good life. Sure. And, you know, it, I've done everything I set out to do and more. Because, you know, once you accomplish what you're trying, what your bucket list was when you were younger, you start adding to it. Mm-hmm. And... um now it's down to, we have a little twin boys that are 12 years old. And we took them to Africa, the January of 16. And that was one on my bucket list, to take them down there and let them see the animals and see what it's like and, and realize that everybody doesn't live like we do. And so we went out into the villages and we went to Africa and we went to the, place where, um, what's his name, the African guy that 
did so much for Africa. Anyhow, where Mandela? he was raised. Mandela. Where he was raised. And, I mean, it is really a slum. Kids were running around playing in mud. Thing, but they they were having a good time. So my mom told me something. My mom had a third grade education. I think I got my uh, my sense of humor from my father. He was a very funny man, and I got my sense of values from my mom. She really knew how to put things into words, and she told me once. She said, "Son, always be happy where you are." Don't be content to be there. But if you're not happy where you are, you'll never be happy. Mm. And, and I thought that was good, made good sense because, you know, there are ups and downs in this business. But even in the down parts, I used to say, you know what? I'm still making music. That's what I set out to do. And I could be happy with not as much success as I had had. And then, then the actual real success meant a lot more to me. I mean, I really appreciated it more. Yeah. Well, on the topic of success, uh, I wanted to confirm, because this looked like just something too interesting not to talk about, is that you'd said in an interview that you were broke by the age of 30 and then broke by the age of 50. Now, did you mean dangerously broke? And, and what, what would you have done differently? I, I think I was, it was that thing I was just telling you. I was broke in the sense that I didn't have the money. I didn't have options. And, you know, that's what wealth gives you is options. And I, I think at 30 and 50, I was trying to figure out why. I mean, I, I, I was happy, you know, but I knew I wanted to do something different. I wanted to accomplish more. So I stayed after it, and I really studied the music business, and and I realize there's only two ways to compete. You can do what everybody else is doing and do it better, and I didn't like my chances, or you could do something nobody else was doing, and you don't invite comparison. And if you look at my songs, they all fall into that category. Mm -hmm. I mean, country was really country when I came along. It was Johnny Cash and Merle Haggard, and, and it was beautiful country and I miss that now but I couldn't compete with him and I knew I couldn't so I did something different and I was lucky it was successful uh, this being your last tour uh, an upcoming retirement to spend time with Wanda and the kids uh, what are you going to miss most about what you've been doing now for the past five decades I guess the people and uh, the fun that I hope people have had and the, the fact that they've given me the chance to do something that I really wanted to do all my life. But I've accomplished everything I set out to do and more. And uh, I think it's time to stay home. And the reason I want to do this now is I'm 77 years old. You don't know how much longer you're going to last. And so I wanted to do this and uh, have a chance to spend some time with my boys. Yeah. And I'm sure that you also want to spend time with uh, other passions, too, like maybe uh, photography and uh, other activities maybe that uh, you didn't get a, a chance to do while you were out singing, recording, and touring. Well, I did uh, about three books on photography, and uh, I was given an honorary master's degree from the Professional Photographers Association. And I've done some beautiful landscape shots, and I'd like to do those again. The problem is positioning is everything in photography. You've got to be able to get down to the bottom of waterfalls and things, and I can't do that anymore. So I have a brand-new camera, and I'm going to get out there and try to shoot something because in the next week I'm going out to the California area. That's where really so much beauty is. And then I'll get a chance to go to the, the canyon areas. Will you also get a chance to, to share this with your fans, maybe on your website or in another book? Yeah, I, I've got a book I'm putting in the other called Places I've Been and Things I've Seen. And uh, I'm putting it together, and I've got 
enough pictures to do it, but it's like everything else. Sooner or later, there will be one picture that will trigger the delivery of this book. I mean, it's, it's I think, a wonderful book, and it shows the things that I care about photographically. Speaking of things that you care about, uh, with more family time on the horizon, I'm wondering if uh, there might be some lessons about fatherhood you'd want to impart to your kids. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, I have talks with them every day. I have no patience with rudeness. Or actually, <laughs> being 11, I guess that's, that's what it is. But, I mean, I talked to them at the dinner table. We were at some friend's house, and they got really silly. And I tried to correct them, and I finally I went to them after it was over, and I said, well, you know, I love you with all my heart, but that's my job is to teach you right from wrong. Yeah, we know, Dad, but I don't think that's going to stop them next time. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, speaking of uh, having a little fun, uh, you've probably been asked this before, but I want to ask it. Uh, what did you think of the Kenny Rogers Roasted Seinfeld episode? Oh, I thought it was hilarious. You know, Jerry, he did. they did a second episode. Jerry opened for me, and he came out, and he missed the first show. He was on the road, and he didn't know where we were working, and he couldn't find us, and the Oak Ridge Boys were out there. It was supposed to have been Jerry and the Oak Ridge Boys, then me, and Jerry didn't show up, and the Oak Ridge boy said, we'll go ahead and go on, and he can go on when he gets here. And he never got there. So he did kind of a joke, and he thought he was going to ride on my tour bus. And I said, no, 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 that's not how this works. <laughs> so we had to give him a little lesson in road seniority. But he was, you know, as always and as usual, he was a great sport. Hmm, it sounds like it. Uh Oh, a lot of people might not know, uh, I mean, the fans now, but there's this idea that you've been around for five, almost six decades. And, six uh, decades, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to go back to one of your first fondest recollections, being in the music industry. What was it like back then? Because that was a special time in the music industry. Was there any particular story way back then, in the beginning, you most fondly recollect? Yeah, you know, I was doing a television show. First of all, you have to know that I recorded originally under the name, which is my true name, Kenneth Rogers. Kenneth. And the Kenneth Rogers the Fourth, because George Hamilton the Fourth was doing stuff. I thought, okay, I'll just give myself some royalty. <laughs> and I did this local television show with my friend. His name was Larry Kane, K-A-N-E. And he had a television show, and he said, you can't call yourself Kenneth on a record. And I said, no, that's my name, and I'm going to call myself that. And he introduced me as Kenny Rogers, and all the little girls started screaming. And I said, maybe I can live with it. <laughs> so that's how I got the name Kenny Rogers. Because <laughs> of the girls. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's why you do it in the first place. No, I don't doubt it. <laughs> The statistics say 67 albums, almost 200 million records. And when I say that, what comes to your head? It, it, it's hard for me to imagine. I mean, that's a lot of records. <laughs> but, you know, when you're doing them, you get caught up in the process. And you don't really see, I mean, you get the money from it, but you don't see the record sales. You don't know the numbers. So to hear that really kind of wakes me up a little bit. It makes me, well, again, like I said earlier, I've accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish and maybe even more. And so it's kind of one of those things that I think that you, the longer it takes you to reach the pinnacle of your success, the longer your glide ratio down. And I think that I've been really fortunate to have been around that long and uh, I, I just kind of don't want to do it past the point that I can't have some pride in what I'm doing. And right now I do. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that it's not far off. My mobility has gotten so bad 
Oh. And, and it's no fun. And it's no fun. I'm curious what you do pre-show or what you had been doing, what your ritual is, if you have a ritual uh, before the show to get yourself in the mood. Well, now I kind of have to study the show because it's a totally different show than I've ever done. And I have a lot of meet and greets that I have to do and, uh, and signing a bunch of stuff. And all that I've kept pretty routine the last 15 years. And uh, once I get that done, then I'm I'm ready to go. I try to back them up one right after the other. When I finish one, I get to go do the other. But it's exciting to interact with the fans. It is. And I, I, I enjoy that very much. And I like meeting the people. You know, you meet people that tell you stories about... We've been married 25 years, and the first song we met was Lady, and yeah. we danced to that at our wedding. And those are great stories. I'm so grateful, incredibly grateful for everything. Well, you're more than welcome. Good luck with everything, the, the, the retirement, the kids, the family, everything. Thanks, Dave. I really appreciate it. Have a great one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. To read the article in Pi Digest, the Bill Murray cover, part three, on PiMediaGroup.com. And he well said, you can't make old friends. It was me and you since way back when. It was you and me since way back when. You can't make old friends. The show must go on. We will still be old friends.